Do you remember when you first discovered glitches in Pokemon? I remember when I did. Summer 1999 at Kingswood Summer Club. Pokemon Red and Blue was released the previous year, which I guess would make me 8 or 9. The Pokemon craze was in full swing over here in the UK. Every day I packed up my Pikachu Yellow Game Boy Color with Pokemon Red permanently slotted into its top. My friends and I would get together with our link cables for epic trading and battling sessions that lasted the whole day or until our parents came to pick us up. Around midsummer, our group was starting to feel like we'd seen it and done it all. Sure, I didn't think we'd ca ever catch them all. Back then, it seemed like an impossibility. We'd grinded to level 100, eliminated the Elite Four more times than we could remember. The game was starting to lose its draw, and there were still four long weeks of summer left. Then we saw Missing No. I remember the first kid I knew to have him. He told us that his brother showed him how to catch this super rare, super awesome Pokemon. We, gad we gathered as he revealed that Pokemon to us, that magical, distorted, reverse L shape that held the key to infinite rare candies. We were all instantly in love and dying to get one of those rare Pokemons for ourselves. So he passed on the secret and showed us how. Within the next few days, our little group was hooked on glitches. We scoured magazines for the latest bugs and tricks, we visited Glitch City, battled all kinds of high-level Pokemon off the coast of Cinnabar, we even caught Mew. But there was one glitch which I've never been able to record since. Funnily enough, I can't remember the details of how to pull it off, but I remember the outcome. Glitch Whip. The technique for finding this little guy followed the pattern of a lot of the tedious Pokemon encounter bugs in red and blue. Talk to this dude, fly to this place. It might have had something to do with Celadon, but I'm not really sure. Glitchwit was just as you'd expect. A glitched up Diglett. The sprite was mostly intact, but the face was distorted, missing no style. There were a few distorted lines through it, like scan lines, and the cry was a little weird, too. Although I can't put my finger on what it was, his level was never visible, but we guessed it may have been over 100, as we could barely put a mark on him while trying to catch him. Most of us resorted to one out of many clone master balls. We nicknamed him Glitchwit, and that night we were eagerly trying to find out what this guy could do. The next day, we all met up to compare results. By this point, we considered ourselves Pokemon Glitch experts. Experiences with Glitchwit were varied. One guy claimed it messed up his game so bad he couldn't even play it anymore and had to reset. Others said they tried to battle with Glitchwit, only to find that the game crashed every time they tried. I had the most luck in battles with the new Glitch Pokemon. His only move was Dig, and he couldn't learn any hidden moves or technical moves, even though you'd expect a Diglett to be able to learn. Against Wild Pokemon, Glitchwit was a powerhouse. He never lost power points, and together we one-hit KO'd every Pokemon we came across. But, he, but the attack itself was odd. It took two turns as usual, but the first turn, he, but he'd, hit, he'd be hit with some kind of self-damaging recoil. There was no explanation other than Diglett was hurt. And that strange cry, but it never made much of a mark on him. Glitch's, Glitchwit's HP was higher than anything I'd ever seen, and because it took only one dig to destroy any wild Pokemon, it was never much of a problem. I laid waste to my friend's team during Link battles, and he soloed the Elite Four. I remember when things got even stranger. I was leveling a team using the XP, I mean the experience all. Destroying the with wild Pokemon with Glitchwit seemed the obvious choice. And I'd maxed many Pokemon this way in the past. I'd woken up early that morning to level especially, and spent all day KOing wild Pokemon. At that moment, I was under my bed covers with my trusty Game Boy color white. Mum knew I would. Mum would go mad if she knew I wasn't asleep at this time. Everything was going to plan, and my new team was leveling up beautifully. I must have been concentrating pretty hard because I was too. It was too late when I noticed how Glitchwit's health had become. I selected Dig for the final time and watched him begin to descend into the ground as expected. I received the message Diglett was hurt. I heard that piercing cry, louder than before, and my stomach turned as I watched his health bar slide toward zero. The bar doubled back on itself and seemed to empty four or five times before Glitchwit repeated his dying cry. Now a horrible noise. Diglett was killed. Do you want to use the next Pokemon? I know it's cliche in these kind of stories, but I remember that vividly. I selected no. My other team member, my other team members wouldn't have made a mark on this enemy Pokemon anyway. I was warped to the overworld and found myself back in the unknown dungeon. Opening my Pokemon menu confirmed what I'd seen before. 
my beloved Glitchwit at the top of the party, health reduced to zero. I selected him. I'm not sure what good I thought it might have done, and noticed that something was different. Maybe it was there before, but I think I would have noticed that Dig was now selectable even outside of battle. I thought for a moment. Maybe it was the atmosphere, but this move was suddenly chilling me. Glitchwit had never been damaged by any wild Pokemon, only by this move. It wasn't even as though he's hurt himself in confusion or with recoil. Whatever had hurt him and ultimately killed him had been underground all along, waiting, sapping Glitchwit's life each time I sent him to attack. His death cry echoed in my ears as I realized what I'd done. My thumb covered over the A, bu a button, my brain willing, to, willing myself to dig and get out of the cave, but my stomach felt sick. What was down there, anyway? I was stuck with no choice. The exit was too far away. My remaining Pokemon would be destroyed if I tried to get there. With a lump in my throat, I dug, and my sprite began digging into the earth, and the screen went black. I wasn't surprised when I realized where I was. Not the entrance of the cave, or even the nearest Pokemon Center, but a glitched-out cave that I now realized was some kind of bug version of Diglett's cave. I checked my Pokemon and saw Glitchwit's health had been restored. He was now my only Pokemon. The other five members of my team went missing entirely. I chose Dig again. Oak scolded me. Apparently, this wasn't the time to use that. With no means of escape, I set off, looking for the exit. My sprite moved slowly, more of a crawl than a walk. As I moved, the cave's walls bugged out, turning red, flexing, and swelling in and out like the lungs of a monster. Slowly, music began to play. High pitch, distorted, and horrible. It was quiet at first, but grew louder with every step. As it played, something became familiar. A familiar tune beneath the whirring, bugged notes. Without thinking, I began to mouth the words to the music. Dig, wit, dig, dig, wit, dig, trio, trio, trio. Dig, wit, dig, dig, wit, dig, trio, trio, trio. Then, I encountered a Pokemon. A wild dug trio appeared. As the distorted battle music began, the level 225 D Doug Trio appeared before my eyes. The cry was an awful warped scream that seemed to become a gnashing crunch before stopping entirely. Doug Trio's sprite, like Glitchwit, was deformed. Doug Trio's three faces with hollow eyes twisted into pixelated howls that looked somehow painful. The bottom of the sprite was unrecognizable. It looked as though six deformed clawed arms were rising from the dirt around Doug Trio's body. My only Pokemon was released, and Glitchwit's back sprite appeared before me. His cry played again, quiet and seemingly a lot weaker. I was just a bystander now as the game took control, selecting attack from the menu. Of course, Dig was the only option. My hands were sweaty as I gripped the Game Boy tight. My breath was hot on the screen. Doug Trio went first. Doug Trio used Scratch! It hit six times, each tear triggering the pitiful cry from my Glitch Pokemon. Glitchwit was left with a silver of a sliver of health as he retaliated with an attack of his own. Diglett used struggle. It hardly made a mark as expected, but it was strange how Dig had never lost power points before. As previous, the game selected the next move. As attack was chosen, I noticed that Glitchwit suddenly had no moves. Two word appeared where the first two attacks should have been. No. Hope. Doug Trio's cry echoed again as it launched an assault of scratches with its deadly horrible arms. Glitchwit was killed after the first strike. Diglett is dead. Do you want to continue? I didn't really understand the question, but that didn't matter. No was selected for me, and the battle faded away. Back on the cover world, I mean back on the overworld, the walls swelled and glitched before my eyes, and the maddening music began again. I inspected Glitchwit. His sprite had changed now. Although his face was never visible, like Doug Trio's, it seemed to be formed into a pixelated scream. Dark brown streaks cut through the sprite. They looked like claw marks or blood. I pressed on. I don't know what I was thinking at that stage, just that this tiny Pokemon had infected my game in a much bigger way than I expected. Which Pokemon seemed kind of wrong to me then, as though it was something I ought to not have been mess messing with. Something we didn't understand or couldn't control. 
With no Pokemon left, I was surprised to find that I didn't black out or warp to a Pokemon Center. The game just continued at usu as usual. It was only a few steps before the Pokemon encounter theme played and the screen turned black. A wild Doug trio appeared. The Pokemon sprite was different to the last, almost completely disfigured. The cry seemed almost seemed as though it wouldn't end, screaming and wailing as a pixelated monster appeared on the screen. Through the glitches and cut hooks, Pixels, I can make out the hollow sockets of eight eyes, eight terrible clawed hands, and a gaping mouth. With no Pokemon left, my trainer's black, stri black sprite faced the glitch head on. Before my eyes, the screen faded as my Game Boy's batteries cut out. Whatever had happened gripped me with fear. That night, I didn't sleep. I even took the game out of the now dead Game Boy, although I'm not sure what that would have done. Days later, I started that game up. I had not saved during what had happened, so I was I was returned to my last save point. Glitchwit was at the head of my party. Dig, his only move. I thought for a moment before abandoning that game forever and starting anew. But I'll never forget how it all started and how it all happened, like something out of a horror movie that keeps on repeating over and over and over whenever I set glitch head on. But everybody has to move on, and I can't seem to forget the whole thing like it never happened like digging into my skin and controlling me in my actions. But it's all in my head. I know I must have been hallucinating this whole thing, but when I see that cartridge, all the horrors I fear are still in there, waiting for it to come out and scare me forever in my head for, an, for eternity to come. <laughs>